Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, welcome. And for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. I'm so excited. Per huge, I sound like a broken record. Not only with saying the same thing that we have so much to talk about, but also saying that I sound like a broken record again, again, again. But like seriously, guys, this is another one of those weeks that's just chock full of transits that's going to change the course of our life, especially from now until the end of the year. What we do with this time, I mean, that's up to you. But I'm someone that believes that if you know how to work with the energy of the planets, you can make them work for you and not against you. And for that reason, I'm going to give you all the information to help you prep, plan for not just the week ahead, but the remainder of this year and how this can impact literally the rest of your life. So go ahead and grab your water, grab your tea, grab your coffee, whatever it is that you're sipping on, get cozy, and let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, darlings, welcome back. So I'm working with a new tarot deck today. I do have the astrology charts pulled up, of course, because as you can tell by the title of today's video, we are gonna be diving into the astrological transits. But if you know, you know, we like to add on layers of intuition messages and I'm really good for channeling messages and bring them over to you guys very deliberate with that and always moving with higher intention so that's something that is that you can expect for that reason I'm going to be working with this tarot deck I don't remember the name but I will link it down below let's go ahead and waste no more time let's dive right in so first things first I want to say uh Taurus Taurus energy is really interesting right now it's going to be leading us into the start of this week and that energy really kind of sets the tone. What we want to do with Taurus energy, because this is where the moon, which rules our emotions, um, what we want to do with this Taurus energy is we really want to be slow, methodical. There is no need to rush into the week ahead. Taurus is uh, known for its stability, but also its intentionality with uh, progress that is slow, forward moving, and doesn't rush in any way, shape, or form. That is also something that we want to bring for ourselves as we enter into this week. There are going to be some major changes that are also going to be impacting us. And when I say major, I really do mean major, right? First things first, on Tuesday, this is when Neptune, the planet of delusion and imagination and higher vibration and higher consciousness thinking and unconditional love and acceptance is going to be moving retrograde. Neptune has been transiting through the sign of Pisces, that which it rules. That has been something that I've been talking about a lot here on the YouTube channel is checking in with our energies and how things make us feel, putting ourselves first, not in a way that makes us self selfish or self-focused, but reminds us that at the end of the day, when we sit with ourselves, when we sit with our intuition and we ask our angels, our guides, the divine, our ancestors, you know, to talk to us, to communicate with us and give us clarity into what are the next steps of our lives. That's really where we're going to find the greatest source of information and the accurate, like accurate information instead of checking in with the rest of the world, looking at society, looking at other gifted individuals and putting their opinions and their their perspective and their vision and their predict predictions above that which we see and feel for ourselves. A big part of this is not just Neptune's transit through Pisces, not just Saturn retrograde now transiting through Pisces, but also Chiron and the North Node transiting through Aries. Aries is known as a self-starter, self-initiator, and helps us to individually kind of like I identify ourselves. Who are we? And the labels, and I put that in air quotes, the labels that we use to kind of box ourselves in, what that looks like for us individually, and to kind of assess how that impacts how we show up for the world or how we try to match that try to try to match that energy so i hope this makes sense to you guys i've talked about it a lot in the, my last previous videos all throughout the remainder of this year because it's been the forefront on a lot of our uh, consciousness right all of us individually things that we're talking about things that we're feeling things that we're sensing and challenging us to grow individually as greatly as as greatly as possible especially when it comes to areas where we have been exchanging our power giving our power over to other people asking them to call the shots being afraid or fearful of the power that we believe other people have over our lives 
and how we allow that to dictate our blessings and our next steps and how we feel about ourselves and ultimately how we show up for the rest of the world and how we give our gifts to others. So now that Neptune is moving retrograde, and again, this is going to be on Tuesday, now that Neptune is going to be newly retrograde, we've been feeling this, this is asking us each, again, individually to look at ourselves and look at the stories that we tell ourselves, right? What do we believe about this situation? What do we believe about our relationships? What is the universe? What has it been teaching us? What is it about to teach us about our relationships, about our job, about our purpose, about our upbringing? These stories that we tell that we believe that can limit us, can hold us back, can make us procrastinate, that can make us dissociate, that can add dysfunction into our subconscious because uh, Pisces energy actually does rule our psychology and our subconscious. Pay attention to your dreams as well. They tend to be very active. This is a wonderful time when Neptune is retrograde to revisit looking into your dreams and seeing what, not specifically what your dreams are telling you, but when you sit with yourself, when you journal, are there common themes with Pisces energy and Neptune as a whole? We can never, and I tell my friends this, my family, they call me all the time, Jess, I had this dream, what does it mean? This is what they think it means, this is what they wish that it would mean. And then I, when I sit with them, we got to get to the root of it because it's not so specific where we look at the, the, the characters of how things are unfolding in our, in our dreams. It's never that specific. It's very symbolic. So that is something else to look at, look at and look for, especially when Neptune goes retrograde or as Neptune is turning retrograde, is setting into motion, especially at the start of this week, now that the moon is transiting through Taurus and then leading into Gemini, how what are the practices that we can do to really begin to prioritize our spirituality our subconscious our psychology and looking at the stories that it is that we tell ourselves that we believe okay there was this message that it is that i wanted to share with you guys especially as mercury venus and the sun are transiting through the sign of cancer cancer is known for having this like defense around itself that is very protective but to its core it's soft it's mushy it's ushy gushy it's sensitive and it's a leader, it's an advocate. So I want you guys to kind of look at your safe places, your safe zones and anything that you may have also guarded and that you protect. For some of you guys, this could be your ego, right? And I know this is gonna be not triggery, but difficult for some people to kind of look at. You may need to really look at or begin to start looking at, especially with Neptune Retrograde, and I'll have a whole video about that, so make sure that you're subscribed and you turn on your notifications, but you may need to look at the stories, again, that is that you're telling yourself and how you have contributed to your own suffering, to certain outcomes that and that have ended in your life or have, how they've shown up in your life, the way that they panned out. For example, if you are someone who when you get sensitive or when you feel wronged or when you are wronging someone, instead of confronting and facing that issue head on, do you procrastinate? Do you disconnect? Do you dissociate? Do you disappear? Do you evaporate? And also look at the energies around you in your life that have done that same thing for you. You don't need to sit with it and dissect it and get to the root of it because so many of us, number one, are on wild, not just are, but have been for a long time, wild healing journeys for ourselves. Definitely when it comes to us splitting and separating away from toxic energies, relationships, whether it be romantic or family or friendships or the relationship that we have with whatever, food, work, um, the neighborhood, community, social media, etc. Cetera, et cetera. We're, we're doing so much reflection. We're looking at ourselves so much and seeing so much of ourselves and processing that. That can be very exhausting. Um, for that reason, this is why I think collectively as a whole, society is beginning to simplify a lot of their lives around them. And that is a wonderful coping me mechanism. It makes things not only does it put things into perspective for you, but it makes it so that it's easy, easily to digest. And a lot of you guys are prioritizing self-care, minimalism, and separating from all the all of the outside noise of the world and being people who are self-starters, people who are okay being on their own, right? But in this process, you know, with this healing journey that so much where life has taken you, 
you know, we do want to pace ourselves. We don't want to overwhelm ourselves. Healing is going to be this endless journey while we're here on, on, here on earth. That is what life is if we set the intention for that. But with that being said, um, I do see with Neptune turning retrograde, the element of reflection and looking at, again, how we've contributed to the suffering of ourselves and also how our actions have impacted other people. And although cancer energy here is not usually doesn't intentionally try to tell stories to self uh, reflect how it's important that we kind of look at these themes and even though you may not be a cancer rising sun moon or whatever you still want to look at how this energy does impact you and apply because you are part of the, the collective here so are there areas of your life where you have to kind of look and see like in this moment i didn't have an answer in this moment i didn't have the courage in this moment i gave my power away in this moment i said i was going to show up in this way and i didn't I didn't fulfill this promise. I didn't, um, I didn't honor like loyalty. I wasn't loyal in the situation, right? We're all human. None of us are perfect. I'm not saying that we make mistakes, but there's choices and there's actions that we take. And those choices and those actions impact people for greater, for good. This is a wonderful thing that we do instead of just kind of like moving forward in our lives and never stopping to look and never stopping to see who is around us and how we're impacting others and that, we may tell stories or some tell, tell tell stories to our consciousness, right? So our consciousness has this story that we say, well, it's just like, you know, whatever excuse that we have for that situation, instead of assessing ourselves and realizing like, yo, in this situation, I was, I did contribute to the problem. Or in this situation, I had no boundaries. In this situation, I, I evaporated. When I should have been there, I evaporated. I wasn't present. So... This is definitely something that you guys want to look into. I did write some notes this morning as I was sitting in my meditation and really reflecting on Neptune retrograde and the messages that it is that spirit was ready to bring into every single one of our lives individually, sat with myself, and I'm still sitting with myself and with the divine kind of processing, you know, and taking notes so that we can have a whole video about that and we could talk about it intimately, just really sit down and discuss here on the YouTube channel. But for now really make sure that um, with this Neptune re Neptune now retrograde starting on Tuesday and carrying us through until the end of the year, we really need to see how we've contributed to the outcome, escapism, avoidance, disloyalty, et cetera, et cetera. Um, for everyone, it's going to be different. Like let's say Pisces rules your 11th house of friendships and connection or social media. This is where you may need to look at yourself and say, I've, I've been telling myself, honestly, I've been telling myself this story that I am this good friend or make an excuse for me or this is something that should I, I should just be allowed to get away with. And that story, maybe others may go along with it. Maybe maybe people don't get along with it. But you have to look at, it, does your conscious feel clear? Does your heart feel, does your heart believe that? Does your heart second that or is there something there a shadow because neptune also rules the shadow aspect of our of ourselves and our subconscious we may not it may not be the first thing that we see because we're not looking for it it's it's tucked away in the back of our minds it doesn't always sit with us well how have you contributed to the situation or for some of you guys it's not so much um you it could be what you believe the story that that you believe that others tell you when when you sit with it you realize this is manipulative this is not healthy this is out of balance this is a violation of my boundaries neptune now retrograde transiting through pisces starting tuesday that's a lot of information that is ready to begin to reveal itself if you're ready to unpack it now if you decide that you do not want to live and learn through this transit human to human i don't blame you that's not going to be my course of action i'm prepared and i'm planned i have my journal which is actually right there i kind of like moved my here's here's actually here's journals from the past i have so many journals it's insane i'm using them to kind of prop up this candle right now because i love the smell of it and i love the energy of it but i moved my i had my journals over here but the one that is i'm writing in is right behind my camera right now right behind you guys 
and um, I've already prepped and planned. I've got a second journal that I'm ready to start opening. I've got pens on pens on pens. We are ready to unpack. Not just the stories that I tell myself that I say, oh yeah, this is acceptable. And yes, this is, it's okay. I'm ready to really sit and confront myself and say, is it though? Is it? Also, not just on external energies, but internal. What When I sit with myself and I ask my, my subconscious, what are you not okay with? What can you not digest? What are you having difficulty processing that you do or that you have done in the past to others that may have made them uncomfortable, that may have made you, you know, you may owe them an apology. You, The best thing to do is to understand that and to come to terms with it because although we don't see our subconscious the loudest all the time or we're not looking to see the subconscious, best believe it does have an impact on our day-to-day -day life and how we move and what we choose and what we run away from and what we run towards. So if you decide that you do not wish to use this transit to dive into this in, in moderation, right, in bits to bits, because I really highly recommend that you don't, I mean, you do you, if you're ready to do the deep dive, by all means do it, girl, but I really suggest, you know, doing it in bits and bits and pieces, carrying your journal with you and making a note of your day-to-day -day experiences, your reactions and how things are making you feel making a note of that and at the end of the night or when you get a quiet moment or during a sacred hour that you sit down with yourself, you unpack it and you really begin to face it so that you can see it for exactly what it is. So that is a very short synopsis like for Neptune retrograde 2024. But we do need to have a whole video. We do need to unpack it as a whole and you can expect that here on the YouTube channel. That's actually one of the next videos that it is that I have pulled up that I wrote down that I'm going to be um, filming for you guys. But for the sake of today's video and this week, what is that we can expect? We're going to need to move forward. The next energy that I want to talk to you guys about is the fact that Mercury, the planet of communication, how we process information, is now directly opposing Pluto. Pluto is currently retrograde in the sign of Aquarius, but Mercury rules, again, how we analyze, how we think, how we talk, and also the little bits and pieces, the moving parts of our daily day life, including our phones, um, planes, cars, trains, transportation, wheels, mechanics, anything that has um, any type of gears or pro analyzing type of information, whether it be a calculator to a cell phone, Mercury is going to oversee this information, usually things that make our lives more convenient, but also can be hell sometimes. Mercury is currently um, opposing Pluto, but this week she, he, it's a masculine sign, is going to be transiting through or transiting, entering into the sign of Leo. This is going to be happening on Tuesday. This is wonderful when it comes to communication, expression, leadership, advocacy, stepping out, stepping forward. It's very animated. It's very colorful. It's fun to listen. It's a wonderful storyteller for good or for bad. So these are the energies that we can expect um, that we find within ourselves, but also in the world around us. For those of you guys that are in sales, you're going to find that the more bold, and elaborate and larger than life that it is that you are when it comes to communication and telling or selling, the more success that it is that you are going to find because you are vibing with this energy, right? And people are gonna be naturally connected to it, in tune with it and you know vibe with it a lot. Um, for those of you guys that are in storytelling, for example, writing plays or in ad acting, or the creative arts. This is another one of those times where your brain and your energy is very expressive. It's loud. It's bold. It's fun to watch. It it it. What's the word? Like it emotes really well. Where you could be telling a story, and the way that you tell the story, the pauses that you take, and the tone of your voice captures the audience, and it, you just nail it. For those of you guys that are actors, actresses, and you are going for um like what is it called, like auditions or sending resumes, whatever the case is, the, the more confident you are and self-assured that you are, the, the, the better, the better. This is not, this is a temporary transit, but you can use this to help you, even though it's Mercury and Mercury is one of the fastest planets 
known for being the messenger of the entire zodiac of all the planets you can use this to revisit to rework and to spruce up and to bring life to resumes cover letter cover letters um, that you can use and recycle throughout the remainder of the year if you're someone who's looking for a job if you're someone who is doing um, looking for funding this is a wonderful time to have those meetings and initiate those points of contact that will literally change you know the the your luck so to speak for the rest of the year because of the effort and the sheer timing of when you decided to make tweaks and fluff things up so keep an eye out for that also, when it comes to um, leaders asking for help and people that you admire, people that you look up to, people that you wish to emulate and mirror a little bit, this is a wonderful time to reach out to you because they're, to reach out to them because their hearts tend to be more open and willing to share and willing to help. So that's definitely something to look out for, right? Um, the other thing that I want to talk to you guys about is the fact that Venus is still currently transiting through Cancer. She's very sensitive. She's very um, strong. She wants to feel supported. She wants to feel safe. This represents all of our energy as a whole. What is that we're attracted to? She is in, will be in this beautiful trine with Saturn. Saturn loves longevity. It loves commitment. It loves bonds. It loves promises. With this, I don't want to say to you that promises that are made during this time will be kept forever why because Saturn is currently retrograde I have a whole video about that I'll link it down below but um with that energy Saturn typically doesn't have the uh, the long-term foresight to be able to follow through on promises that is that it's making however in the moment it does feel good so as long as it's short-term and not long-term promises and commitment we're good um, for those of you guys that are in areas of business, business investing, with your money, your resources, Venus also does rule your, your, um, the energy of like finances and where we put that, where we put our coin, what is most valuable to us when it comes to areas of like home and hearth and places that feel like neighborhood, like community or it's like a feeling of comfort, like it has an old term, like a long term reputation. These are things that um, Saturn is going to bring as a blessing and you're going to be exploring either investing in it or finding yourself there, finding it gives more to you than regular, right? Think about like nostalgia, places that have old reputations. This could be a home that you guys are investing in. This could be a business. This could be a car. It could be an article of clothing. It's something that you wish to secure that you can put money into that you sign, have a paper, like sign on a piece of paper. You're just naturally drawn to it or the universe presents it to you and says, hey, we heard that you were in the market. This is something that you may be attracted to and rightfully so you will. Not only are you going to be attracted to it, but clients or whoever it is that's going to see you with it is going to value that as well. And this is also going to be something that will be a promise for the future. Now, I, I did say that when it comes to Saturn, that these promises, these commitments, these bonds that is that we make for the long term, you know, it doesn't tend to fare. It doesn't tend to pan out. However, if you have someone, if, if the universe presents to you an opportunity that is antiquated, but in a good way, right? Like it has an excellent reputation for years, like generations. This is something that is worth exploring. And this is something that is worth investing in to get real solid wisdom and um, advice and professional opinion. If you're going to invest, as long as you are doing your due diligence and as long as you are doing the work, even though Saturn is retrograde, it tends to pan out for years to come, like lifetime to come. One thing that is kind of coming in, into my forefront of my mind is um, someone in my life right now is currently considering buying a business. And, you know, they asked me what my opinion was, what it is that I wanted, to, what, did, what did I see for the situation? What would I want for the situation if, you know, putting myself in their shoes and the first thing that I did was immediately ask them you know give me the details of the place and how does it make you feel as I'm a business person in my mind oftentimes and um so I really had to separate for me to ask that question is not um the most business friendly I guess because it can be very for us to have that 
dry, cold perspective that Saturn requires. Sorry, girls. Sorry, guys. My little girl is kicking, so I have to, like, kind of lean back a little bit. Um, so if you see me kind of, like, touching my stomach, sometimes it's just because she's moving. <laughs> sometimes that's what it is. Other times I just can't help it. Uh, anyway, um, so I had to kind of click back. And for me to ask, you know, my, you know, how does this place make you feel? That is almost the polar opposite of what Saturn Saturn rules, which is that cold, dry energy that doesn't always take our feelings into consideration, but it's important for the sake of today's transits and where it is that we are collectively as a whole. And they were talking about the nostalgia. They were talking about the reputation. They were talking about this the fact that this business has been there for years and has already built and established a reputation for in the community that people who have never been to this area are drawn to this area and put a pin to go to the spot. And even though Saturn is currently retrograde, I told this person that, number one, it seems like an awesome opportunity. It seems like the universe really did open up a blessing here for you to explore Vertex and Gemini, for you to ask questions, for you to show up, for you to ask others what is the gossip and look into the research of what other people are saying. And then bring in professional, bring in uh, professionals that know the industry really well what do they say and show up for yourself do that due diligence extend even if it seems like out of not out of reach but even if it seems like a lot like you're over working the situation it will that type of energy when you're working with saturn it will cover you and it will create um the foundation that is that you need to be to make a wise choice and decision so if I say that to say that some of you guys are really making big purchases in your life, I have a, a many clients in the past who are in, you know, big public platforms, uh, big, big, and um, the reason why I am saying that now, and or also people who make large investments or are moving with the stock market, is astrology really really helps you to navigate through specific transits and to help you see how the doors will spring open and to look into this even further and I, I just want to pause because I know some of you guys are a little bit overwhelmed and intimidated by astrology and I always bring the real deal and real conversation here we don't really sugarcoat it we don't go we don't stay surface level with this my astrology readings and predictions are for serious investment for health betterment of the self and for us understanding, you know, what's going on in our day-to-day -day lives. But a lot of you guys do use this for major purchases. And I've had many clients reach out to me and say, Jess, this is something that came on my radar. What do you think, yay or nay? And we can answer those questions. So I'm, I really want to give you guys that. I'm not open for readings right now, but as if it was a consult. Um, do you keep in mind that it's not just Saturn retrograde and Neptune retrograde that are clouding judgment? or making long long term contractual agreements difficult but not impo but not impossible. We do have Uranus transiting through Taurus which can bring in wildly radical unexpected surprise opportunities for you to advance and there is a phenomenal trine between Uranus transiting through Taurus as well as Pluto retrograde in the sign of Aquarius retracing its steps back in the sign of Saturn. Basically what it is that I'm saying here and what it is that I'm seeing is opportunity but you do have to do your due diligence. You do need to check in and get a pulse of gossip. Now that's something that in a super spirituality world we don't even like to talk about because we think oh gossip is bad but sometimes where there's smoke there's fire and this word of mouth this reputation and what the neighborhood is saying about that area will tell you a lot and help you to make an informed decision on if you do want to buy this business if you do want to venture out into this if this is a, the right neighborhood for you and although yes if you were to look at other videos i'm not knocking that i love that everybody's interested in astrology these days and has their two cents like putting their two cents within that but also keep it with a grain of salt because saturn retrograde can complicate long-term investments but it also helped it reminds us that we need to do our due diligence yes neptune can cloud our judgment but our intuition always has the last and final say and should have the last and final say we should be asking ourselves and developing a relationship with our angels and our guides and our ancestors and the divine so that we have discernment 
you know, at the end of the day, that's just something that I'm always going to be really big about. So I could talk about this forever and I will <laughs> when we dive into uh, Nept Neptune retrograde and I've already kind of broken down and by kind of, I mean, I broke down Saturn retrograde. So definitely keep a, an eye out for this video. It doesn't make these energies of what it rules impossible. It means that we do need to do our due diligence and kind of check, double check, triple check, you know, what we're working with, what we're dealing with here. This week, I do feel like we are going to be locking in to our minds and what we're analyzing, what we're processing, what we're talking about with Mercury currently um, directly opposing Pluto, locked in like a pit bull on a leg. <laughs> Maybe that's not the right. <laughs> Maybe that's not the right metaphor. I'm a huge advocate for pit bulls and I don't like the fact that people think that they're violent. <laughs> I'm only laughing because the internet, but yeah, I, um, yeah, you, what, what I'm trying to say here and don't cancel me is, um, you're going to be locked in and not let go of a current situation, whatever that is. It could be a p tiny bit of information. It could be a goal. It could be, do you know when you say something cringe and you simply cannot stop obsessing about it? I had that moment this morning before my meditation. Thank God for meditation, right? Or else I would have been still ruminating on it and not able to let it go. Like could not let it go. But you know when you just like can't let something go? It's just in your mind. And it's just like, ah, oh, like why did I say that? That was the dumbest thing. Like if I could go back in time, I would. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would completely avoid the situation or I would have just been a normal person, whatever the that means. Yeah, sometimes Mercury opposing Pluto is something that helps us to lock in on a goal or lock in on a concept or an idea or a conversation for good that is constructive and powerful. And then other times we're just like overly obsessing about things. And don't forget that the moon started off in Taurus this week. It's going to be transiting through Gemini. There's going to be a lot of ideas, communication, information, like static in our minds the only people that tend to fare well with this are the air signs libra aquarius and gemini seem to really really vibe with this the rest of us are either overstimulated by it or like where it's like overwhelming and the others were like hyperactive kids we just cannot sit down we can't settle down or we disconnect completely so everyone's going to be different how i would use this is to lock myself into a goal turn my phone on dnd or silence it in some way set an alarm for like two hours and just really work on achieving that goal and focusing on that goal and then look at my phone and allow any type of distractions to come in. That's how I would, that's how I would and how I'm going to work with this energy this week, but you do you. Okay. The last major bit of information that is that I want to talk to you about, uh, cause this video is about 30 minutes long now <laughs> is the fact that we have the new moon in cancer and this is going to be on friday the 5th and the same day not directly exact but pretty much damn near saturday is venus is going to be squaring off with chiron now do you remember how i was talking about um how cancer can be of course very emotional but can be very like defensive and it's in our best interest to kind of sit with ourselves, the softness of ourselves, and reflect and say, who am I? What do I need? What's going on? What am I processing? What is the truth? Especially not because of can the Cancer New Moon, but because now Neptune is fully retrograde and Saturn is retrograde and Pluto is retrograde. There's going to be a lot of past influences showing up in a way that is remarkably reflective to us, especially at the new moon. Now, new moons are, tend to be quiet. They're not as reactive and active as a full moon where the energy is just ripe and full and bing, bang, boom. Like, obviously, something is in the, in, in the air. We're all going crazy, <laughs> for lack of a better word. It's like, something clearly is happening. Something's going on. The new moon can be very quiet. With quietness, if we are intentional about it we can extract from the quiet not only to manifest if you're someone who likes to manifest and work with the new moons in order to bring in new experiences into your life or opportunity or certain things that you're asking the universe for but it is uh, a, a wonderful moment 
to sit within ourselves and reflect and to gain clarity and to look, like really look, not only look, but listen and hear what is being said within, to look at what was said on the outside and make it make sense as far as where it belongs in our in our lives and what it's telling us. Do you know when you're someone who just speaks or someone who speaks all the time, they never listen, they never learn, right? Try to be in a person who is able to be quiet and ask questions. You gain so much more knowledge, you gain so much more awareness that can help you to plan to pivot as necessary as needed instead of you assuming that what you are seeing what you're perceiving that what how you look at something is accurate and is what it is this new moon in cancer has the opportunity to make every single one of us very vulnerable in the way that we can use for good and by good i mean to help us to gain deeper clarity and what we have not been allowing ourselves to see or accept or deal with, this shouldn't be overwhelming. It should be something that brings you clarity and direction and says, this is a fresh start. This is a new journey, a new chapter where I'm able to nurture and support myself in a new way, especially after I've lived, I've learned and gone through all these different experiences. That's if you allow yourself that quiet time to, to really sit and reflect. For some of you guys, you may be reconnecting with family in a totally different way, a totally different light than you have ever before. For others of you guys, you're a new advocate. For some of you guys, you're stepping into a new chapter in your lives, a new identity where you are a leader and you are in your element. You're in your zone and I'm setting intention for that. That's what that new moon represents. Now, I'm going to have a whole nother video about that as well. There's a lot of videos that I'm going to be talking about like a lot of information that we need to talk about we're no longer doing astro chat live simply because during my pregnancy there are so many different like um i don't say highs and lows but ch challenging days and days where you know <laughs> definitely not what i was def what i've heard but not at all what i was expecting just totally different experience so um for that reason i was just too the energy is just so changeable that it wasn't a good idea for me to say you know, we're going to go live for this. So for that reason, it's videos right now and content and information, which actually ends up being wonderful because you're able to revisit more and more. You could have done it with Astro Chat Live, but it's just, um, it seems to be uh, better, like reaching people better, this information about Neptune, retrograde, the new moon and cancer. So I'm going to allow the universe to inspire this pivot right now. Before we go, though, I do want to tell you I did pull some cards. Remember that in the very beginning when we were talking? I pulled some cards. We have the world card here, the first card to jump out, which is the card that connects us to the release, the surrender, the acceptance of certain things for the sake of understanding that it was a journey, that life is a journey, that this is a lesson, and things are going to change things have to change things have to shift things have completed cycles have been completed karmic ties have been cut and crossed out of our lives and as soon as something ends something new had already begun what does that look like for us now what does the world card represent what chapter of your life is nearing to a close what res resolutions or revelations are you coming to terms with now that are freeing you up so that you can move from the world card to the fool card which is ready to venture out and ready to explore and take a light luggage with you, like travel really light into the next journey of your life and bring with you the experience and the necessities and just totally open to what the universe and the world has for you now. So I'm going to be sitting with this card definitely and kind of reflecting on this chapter in my life that's closing for me and how do I prepare for what's next and the best way to prepare right now is to simply say stay open and to do practices set into motion practices that give you faith first over everything else because at the end of the day ultimately that's really all that is that you need the universe the divine your angels your guides your ancestors will provide for you so as long as you have that like what else what else is there what else what else is important everything else will come the next cards that we have here, I love this, and some of you guys really need to see this and feel this. We have the Queen of Earth. 
and this is connected to the queen of pentacles she's the card of stability security structure and um, she feels safe she feels supported she feels nurtured and she also enjoys the fruits of her labor and the life that's around her the garden that it is that she and others have worked so hard to tend to grow or that you have grown for yourself and what this card is reminding us to is to look around us and say you know do i feel stable and supported here do i feel nurtured do you trust that your future is going to be sound and safe do you trust that you are capable of you know, not only achieving your dreams, building those dreams, but enjoying those dreams as they come to fruition. If not, then that's something that you can also set intention for at the time of the new moon in Cancer, who also enjoys safety, security, stability, family, and the things of the heart and the home. Okay, the last card we have here is He of Fire, which to me either connects to the page or the Knight of Fire. I can't remember in this deck, but either way, what this does bring is ignited passion and desire and and motivation and willingness to show up to participate in life to be hands-on and to be exploring this world and all of the different ways that excite us every single day i love this energy especially as we move from taurus and gemini to cancer to leo especially as uh, mercury as transiting into the sign of leo fire sign and this is a, a fire card about um, really what it's doing is it's, it's encouraging our goals and encouraging our faith and our optimism and our courage and our ambition to show up to ask for what it is that we want and even chase after or boldly state to bold to boldly declare the things that is that we want to manifest and to bring into our lives and say that yes I'm accepting yes I'm deserving yes I am ready let's do this so guys that was a whole lot for us to talk about in one video like I said this is another one of those times where there's like so much that's happening in the week. There's so much that we can do with these energies that is going to support us not just here in the in the temporary, but also in the future. There's also a lot of potential for here for us to look into the past and come to terms with and resolve certain issues, especially when it comes to the matters of the subconscious. Look at your dreams, look at your feelings, look at what the things that is that you don't want to face, things that you don't want to see, and you'll be, begin to see a lot and be able to heal a lot. Now, for those of you guys that are interested in more exclusive readings, I do offer Bahati Love Notes, which I'm going to be shuffling for next. This is basically a small group that I shuffle with, a small collective, and we just kind of, you know, contribute our questions that we want to focus on. I shuffle with, shuffle within that and answer those questions in anywhere between a 20 and 30 minute video is usually my method, my practice. It was 15 minutes or 12 minutes back in the day, but as you guys can tell and see, I'm very long-winded and very thorough <laughs> and a perfectionist and a giver. So you always will see me going above and beyond. Bahati Love Notes is a membership. I'll link it down below. For those of you guys that want to explore tarot, knowledge, esoteric symbolism a little deeper, and by a little, I mean a lot, Sacred Circle Tarot School is definitely there for you. It's a learn at your own pace um, education system over 70 hours or 50 hours worth of video content i'm pretty sure it's 70 hours worth of video content that's a lot of content that is not superficial tarot it's not like ace of cups means love and new beginnings and a new birth or a new chapter in your life we go really really deep so um that's for beginner to advanced studiers of tarot and again esoteric symbolism numerology and definitely astrology woven in there however if i'm ever going to do which i do want to touch will teach astrology that in itself is going to be very very thorough you guys know there's a lot of information when it comes to astrology there's a lot of information with tarot and esoteric symbolism all by itself but astrology is a whole nother novel within myself like thick novel and it's going to take time and um that will come in time so that's um for those of you guys that asked about that you will see that and last thing last thing personal note you guys have been asking about my baby registry and I just can't believe the generosity and the thoughtfulness and the outpouring of love and gifts that and like positive intention for me and this journey in my life I am beyond grateful I'm always blown away I just can't believe it but I can believe it because you guys have been BFFs from the jump from the beginning and I so appreciate it I will link that down below I felt so uncomfortable and shy kind of sharing it 
but I just, I had a few friends and a few family members just being like, Jess, these people really love you and they really care about you and they're excited about you and we understand the hesitation and the privacy and all those other things and a lot of them too are very, just as private as I am, like definitely my family and my partner are very, very private. Um, but even they had their encouraging words. And I just really want to thank you guys. If that's something that you do want to um, participate in, the baby registry will be linked down below. And I just can't believe it. And thank you guys so much in advance. Um, I am in the process of transitioning my P.O. box from one location to the next location and also kind of putting it on a hiatus for a little bit because, you know, there was just some weird weirdness with that. But um, I don't have... Uh, my P.O. box has changed. So for those of you guys that did send gifts already and they kind of bounced back, that was why. And I'm not quick to resolve that right now. <laughs> um, it's important to me, but it's, you know, it's just been one of those things that's been on this endless list that um, I'm, you know, there's a lot of things that are important, but that wasn't the top, top priority when there's like, clients and custom candles and you know all types of life things and business things that were just always took first and there's how many days in a week and how many weeks in a month and how many months in a year and time flies so thank you guys again for being so patient with me thank you so much for hanging out thank you guys so much for the well wishes the blessings and just being there just being there being a part of this community ask all of your questions about astrology and this week down below in the comments I'm going to catch up on all of them. And until then, you guys, I'm sending you all of my love. For those of you guys that I'm going to meet in Bahati Love Notes, I'll see you in about five seconds. And everyone else, I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.